Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening, teacher. Welcome to the class. Let's see how it goes today. Okay. We're going to wait a few minutes so the good rest evening, of the teacher. class calls. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay, we're going to wait just two more minutes so the rest of the people join the class. I hope today we don't have any problems, issues, or anything like that.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the English class today. We're going to start our fourth class. So welcome and uh, we're going to start with the platform. Today I'm using a, a different computer. So I, I'm hoping this is going to work better. So this is the video conference on today, compare distribution options. And uh, this is the question for today. So all the other questions are also there in the platform already. Remember that we need to finish the 1.7 homework that it says ordered words to make sentences. And that, well, this is the grammar that we're going to review today, the comparatives with us and us. And then uh, there are just five, five questions, five situations, and then you will be able to submit that one into the platform. Do you have any questions about this? No question. Good, perfect. So we are going to continue then and we are going to check the assistance, the attendance. So Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Hi, teacher. Good. Good evening. Good evening. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present, teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present, teacher. Good. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening. Present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodriguez. Hello, teacher. Present. Good. Welcome. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good evening. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Good evening, present, teacher. Good evening. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. And Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay, perfect. We're going to continue then. Uh, today, we're going to try to see the video. Let's see if this time is possible, okay? So let me just check. By now I believe that the connection is much better. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to play it and let me know if you are able to listen to it. Using a channel of independent- Can you hear? Yes. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we made it today. That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on this, but very good that today is going to be better. So by now, we're going to listen to the, uh, watch the video and listen to it. And then we're going to discuss what did you understand about it, okay? And uh, other something. So here we go. The party companies to find, win, make, keep and grow happy customers on our behalf has a long tradition in the software industry. For some software companies, this indirect channel has been a major contributor to global success. But for most software companies, making it work remains a constant struggle. I'm Hans Peter Beck, and in this video, I will discuss the main difference between the direct and the indirect go-to-market approach and how you can make the indirect approach work in your favor. With a direct go-to-market approach, you employ and you pay all the resources required for finding, winning, making, keeping and growing happy customers. 
The benefit of the direct approach is the full control you enjoy and your ability to make fast changes to the way you interact with the market. The drawback is the massive long-term investments this approach requires and the steadily growing organization you need to manage on your path to global market leadership. In the indirect go-to-market approach, you must first find and recruit independent companies that then find, win, make, keep and grow happy customers, providing solutions with your product as a core component. Such independent companies operate in their own name, at their own expense and at their own risk. The benefit of the indirect approach is the enormous scalability potential. The drawback is the added complexity of managing independent companies between you and your customers. And the additional time it takes to recruit and enable the channel partners before you can book any significant revenue. When you choose the indirect go-to-market approach, then you introduce a third-party business model into your own business model. Your ability to manage this additional layer of complexity is the key competence that will help you become successful with the indirect channel. Now, I strongly recommend using the business model framework and terminology introduced by Alexander Osterwelder in his seminal book, Business Model Generation. Using the Osterbauer framework, your business model with a direct channel is illustrated to the left, while the business model using the indirect channel is illustrated to the right. Introducing an indirect channel into your business model may very well have an impact on all the other building blocks in your business model. Now, keeping the following issues in mind will help you become successful with the indirect channel approach. Customers of your channel partners are still your customers, even when the invoicing relationship is now through the partners. You want to create and maintain brand awareness with your customers and ensure that they can see value in the fact that the channel partner solutions are built with your core technology. Your channel partners are not your customers. They are your channel to your customers. Recruiting and managing channel partners now become a key activity and a core competence you must acquire and grow. You now need two value propositions, one for your customers and one for your channel partners. Your channel partner value proposition is based on your understanding of the business model opportunity that you offer them. With the indirect channel approach, it is not only your product that must be attractive and competitive. You must also help your channel partners build and scale a successful business model with your product as a key component of their customer value proposition. Compared to the direct go-to-market approach, the indirect go-to-market approach generally requires more time and additional investments up front but it pays off as your channel partners gain momentum and grow their business with your product. This series of videos on building successful partner channels was brought to you from Copenhagen, my hometown. Very good, clear as our chat. So what <laughs> did you understand there? Okay, so for first of all, what did you get from the video? About different approach for business. Very well. So, but different approaches from uh, the, the distribution channels, right? So we are going to have advantages and disadvantages in both. So what else did you get? For the indirect marketing approach, yes. it, we have a full control. Very good, that is true. For the direct one, uh, we're going to have full control, right? So we're going to have everything in our hands until we 
deliver the product to our customers. What else? With an indirect channel, we have to find and recruit independent companies. Very good, that is true. So it's very, very um, important to get the right partners, right? It's not anybody because at the end, they are going to represent our company, our products. So it's, it's very, very important that you, you hire companies, partners that they are going to transmit that you really care about what the product is, the quality and many other things. Good. What else did you get? Some key consideration for the indirect sales are end users, are the customers and the second is the channel partners are not a customers. I remember this. Very good, that is true. So yes, they are partners. They are people that work not for you, but with you so you can uh, deliver the product. So, and that is, that is true. They are not the end, uh, let's say consumers of our products. What else do you get? He said, depend your business, you choose the uh, better channel distribution. Very good. So not all the, I mean, you need to choose the one that is the best for your product, the best for your situation, your um, location. There are many things that you have to take in consideration for you to choose the right distribution channel. Good. What else? Okay, that was very good. So uh, just last uh, one last question. Where is located Hans Peterbeck? Do you remember where he said he was? Nobody remembers where he is located. Okay, he said that he was in Copenhagen. So he's in Denmark, there in uh, Europe. Very well, so we're going to see now the second, uh, the second video that is about indirect channel only. As usual, we're going to pay attention. We're going to try to get the most of it and then we're going to provide our opinions or what we understood. So here we go. Of independent third-party companies to find, win, make, keep, and grow happy customers on our behalf has a long tradition in the software industry. For some software companies, this indirect channel has been a major contributor to global success. But for most software companies, making it work remains a constant struggle. I am Hans-Peter Beck, and in this video, I will discuss the principles for when we can choose the indirect approach through independent channel partners, and when we are better off going directly to the markets. Choice between serving customers directly through our own marketing and sales efforts, or using independent resellers or channel partners as we call them, that operate in their own name, at their own risk, and at their own expenses, is highly affected by the nature of your business model. There are basically three scenarios to consider. In the A scenario, our product is the basis for big projects with a high price tag. Our potential customers will have a committee assigned to drive the project, and just one of their tasks is to select the vendor. From our perspective, such projects are complex and risky because there are many decision makers with different agendas. The sales cycles are long, and losing such deals are very, very expensive. A scenario companies typically choose a direct go-to-market approach for two main reasons. 
The first reason is lack of resellers. In the market for specialized, comprehensive and customizable solutions, there seldom are any independent channel partners readily available to find, make, keep and grow enterprise customers on our behalf. The second reason is the uncertain growth potential for new independent resellers. As the learning curve for mastering these types of solutions is long and steep, and as there are only a few deals open in the market at any time, and as the sales cycles are long and the customers clearly prefer being served by the vendors directly, the growth potential for independent resellers is very uncertain. So vendors in the A scenario not only prefer, but are also left with no other choice than the direct go-to-market approach. Now, this situation may change as we establish our brand. When we have built a solid market share in the A scenario, it is not unusual that we are approached by potential implementation partners. Implementation partners are not interested in, and are also seldom very good at, selling our solutions. It may actually be very interesting for us to establish a network of implementation partners as they will enhance our delivery capability. When companies in the A scenario are successful with their sales efforts, exactly the delivery capacity often becomes the critical bottleneck. Now in the B scenario, we're in the opposite end of the chart. We have a simple and inexpensive product addressing a huge volume market. Having a simple standard solution with short sales cycles addressing a large market doesn't benefit from using independent channel partners. The partners have little value add potential and they need to build a volume business to achieve profitability. Independent channel partners are seldom the best resource for generating volume sales of simple products. In the B scenario, you will be approached by potential resellers when you have established your brand. When there is a steady demand in the market for your value proposition, potential resellers can bundle your products with their own current offerings and increase their share of customers' wallet without increasing their sales expenses. Likewise, you may see an opportunity using resellers to reach segments in the market where your own direct reach is weak. The best opportunity for an indirect go-to-market approach based on independent channel partners is the C scenario. The C scenario, where our solutions are addressing the small and medium enterprise market with moderate sales cycles and with value add potential for the channel partners is already served by independent channel partners. The channel is already there. In the C scenario, there is enough market volume to support many partners. And as each partner can make extensions to the product, they do not have to compete head on for the same business. The value add potential will improve the channel partners margins and make the individual business deal much more profitable for them. With the channel partners extensions and implementation capacity, we can reach much bigger markets than we could ever reach with our own resources. The partners benefit from our branding efforts and the joint activities of us and our partners help create more awareness and stimulate demand. So let's sum it up. Very comprehensive products addressing the enterprise market and very simple product addressing a mass market should primarily be sold directly through our own marketing and sales operations. Products with a value add opportunity addressing small and medium sized organizations can benefit substantially from being sold through the already available channel of independent value added resellers. This series of videos on building successful partner channels was brought to you from Copenhagen, my hometown. So there was the circuit of happiness in that video. <laughs> Okay, what did you understand on this? I know that there were, uh, there was a lot of information, but so pieces that you remember? The, yeah, the, the, 
the flashes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he mentioned that in the channel grow win and you can get happy customers. That is true. So uh, uh, do you have major competitors for success? Success. Success. Huh? Uh huh. Um. Oh my God. Operate on their own own risk. Yeah, that is another thing that you need to yeah. take. There was a word he mentioned venda. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. But was so difficult to to hear the word. Okay. Well, or he he mentioned that our product is the basement. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Potential resales can increase this something. I don't remember, but he mentioned. <laughs> okay. What's so, so difficult? <laughs> yeah, a lot of information, right? So yeah. that is, this video was very yeah. full of information. Very good, but that was very nice. Thank you, Rose. Any other person? Any other comment? Um, hi, teacher. Uh, he talked uh, about shows between serving customer directly, directly, or using resellers or channel or channel partners that operate in their own own name. That is true. So the, for the indirect channel, it's like that one. So you are going to have resellers. Remember that depending on the size of the products that you want to sell, you might get wholesalers, retailers, distributors. So they are different depending on what you want to do and where would you like to locate that one. But uh, there are risks on these ones and there are uh, advantages. Also, he was talking about two different scenarios, right? So, but I'm going to listen to some other people. Let's see. Thank you very much. Yes, this this uh, scenarios uh, to have a uh, own risk for each uh, their own expenses. That is true. So businesses is risk. That is yes. that is one of the reasons why sometimes we do not do our own business. Right? Sometimes we have ideas. Yes, all all business have a. Uh, a risk in, in their operation on sellers of product or manufacturing that too. That is true. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Any other opinion? Yes. For example, he mentioned in the scenario C that multiple, we have multiple partners and the partners are benefit with the brand with our brand that is true so that's why the arrangements uh, they should be uh, there should be a very nice negotiation before right because if you have a product that is very nice and uh, other people is going to represent you that is a risk for you right and they are going to be like the final phase that people are going to see whenever they purchase our products so that is something very very important could any other thing, any other opinion? No more. Huh. Okay, so we have here uh, some uh, other information that is always related because this is the topic for unit one, of course. Oh, but we have another one here that is not in the books, but we can check about that one. Let's see, Osmin, could you please read the first one of these three most common distribution channels? The direct, okay. please. Okay, teacher. Uh, direct, manufacture, su supply, uh, they go direct, directly to consumer so without using any intermediaries. Retailer, excuse me. Outlets. Retail outlets mail other ceiling and internet ceiling. Very good, perfect. So this is the direct, that is the first one, right? Yes. Manufacturer supplies the goods directly to consumers without using any intermediaries. So we know that, right? And the, there are three uh, 
examples on how to do that one. Retail outlets, so you, even if you put the, the products in another store, it's going to be like for you just to put it there in front of the customer. So it's going to be direct. Mail order selling, like when anybody calls a phone number, for example, and they say, I need this product, and you send the product via mail. Or the one that is the most common here is the internet selling, so online, right? Um, nowadays, also influencers and many other people, they are helping some uh, companies to, to sell their products. So uh, that is also very interesting. Let's see, um, do you have any question on the first one? Okay, uh, Sandra Gladys, could you please read the indirect? A manufacturer sells the goods to consumers, throws one or more maidermen. Retires, Gonzalez, Agents, Brokers, Franchises, Franchises. And Very good, perfect, so thank you. So the indirect, as we know, is not directly to the consumer. So manufacturer sells the goods to consumers through one or more middlemen. Middlemen is like intermediaries. And we have, of course, the retailer, the regular retailers, wholesalers, agents, or brokers. So what is what is a broker? Do you know what a broker is? He's intermediate too. That is true. It's an intermediary. And uh, yeah, it's like, well, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you remember whenever an agent is trying to sell your product. Yeah. So they, they try to to call other companies and say, hey, you know, I have this marvelous product, it's amazing, it's going to, uh, this is like, like a salesperson, but it's going to sell not only one product, but a lot, a lot of your product. So that is it. The other one is very popular nowadays, that is franchise. Do you know what is a franchise? Yeah, when the model of the business that the one brand share with the other uh, third parties that is necessary compliancy the specific uh, specific condition for the for for the business the brand the process are similar in the in the case the franchises very good perfect very good so a franchise is like that a franchise is like there is a product that is very popular very nice and only by by seeing that product people they say oh i want that right so what they do what the brand what the uh, the companies do is they sell the franchise so to sell the franchise it means that you can buy the brand usage. You can use their name, their colors. You can sell their products. But as our partner here said, we need to comply with certain, certain rules. So for example, uh, quality, um, cleanliness, uh, the way that you are going to, to get to the, to the consumer, so a lot of restaurants right now, there are franchises. For example, here, uh, do you remember McDonald's is like a franchise. You pay for that one. And uh, in the past, it was like that. Uh, they were using the brand, but it was not McDonald's itself. It was different. And they became uh, into a biggest, I remember, or anything like that. Uh, so franchises are very popular. Another thing that they have is that you need to pay for that one. So you are going to pay to the company for the usage of the brand. Okay, a reseller is very similar to a retailer, of course. And we have another one that is like the new one. Ada Patricia, could you please read the, the next one, the hybrid? Okay, hybrid. 
manufacturer sells the goods through multiple channels, owns, uh, owned as well as third, perdón, eh, excuse me. Third party. Third party channels, owns websites, on retail store, retailers and wholesalers, brokers and distributors. Very good. So the hybrid is like a combination. So you are going to have, you are going to hire another company to sell your products, but it's going to be like a subsidiary from you. So it's part of the same company, but at the same time, it's a different company. So it's like, what can I say? Prisma Moda and Siman, for example, they are different in names, but they are linked by the same owners. So it's something like that. They, uh, you have a brand and products and you have another company just to sell the products, but they are part of the same company. Something like that is the hybrid. And you can have your own websites, for example. So it's your, but another company manages it. On retail stores. So all their company also manages that one. Retailers and wholesalers that are different companies, but part of your corporation brokers, distributors. So this is a very interesting thing because one company is going to do the creation, the building of their products. And the other one is the one that is going to sell, but everything is linked. And at the end, the profit is going to be very, very high. Good. Do you have any questions on this first approach? How is the connection today? Is, is it better? Do you listen very well? It's better. It's better. Oh, I'm better, very happy. Teacher. Your sound is very clear. Perfect. I'm very happy. I will sleep very well today. That's nice. Okay, so let's continue then. So um, we have factors for classifying retailers' levels and amounts of service. So sometimes it's important for us to classify the retailers that we're going to use to distribute our products. Remember that we say that um, is a very important because they are going to be the face of the product whenever we get to the consumers. So we're going to read a little bit about this one. Let's see, lower this. Could you please read the first part? Okay. Uh, Self-service. Yes, please. Okay. Self-service. Self-service retailers allow customers to perform the process of search, compare, and collect goods for saving time or money purpose. For some consumer, self-service is considered a benefit while others may view it as an inconvenience. It is mostly used in discount stores and by sellers of convenience goods and fast-moving shopping goods. Very good. So retail stores can be categorized in accordance to the level of service they provide. So the first one is self-service. And as Lauda said, self-service retailers allow customers to perform the process of search, compare, and collect goods for saving time and money purpose. So the customers can come and search uh, they can see, for example, to, like the supermarkets, right? They, uh, you can go there and compare uh, the same product of two different brands. Which is better? Why this is more expensive? Why this is bigger? Why this is uh, a different one? So you can compare that one. And you save time. I mean, imagine that, imagine that you have to go to the McCormick store or to the Hellman store. I mean, that's not good, right? So in the same place, you will be able to compare. For some consumers, self-service is considered a benefit while others may view it as an inconvenience. Why do you believe that consumers may see this as a benefit or an inconvenience? What is, what is for you? Is it a benefit or an inconvenience? Is good or is bad for you to have a self-service retailer store? Uh -huh, anybody? Sometimes it's good because yourself is 
looking up uh, pick up the, the the things but sometimes for example at the supermarket i need a product but it doesn't have the price and i have to look uh, for someone and nobody is near because the machine when you put the the coal the bark the coal bar doesn't work and and i i was looking for the entire supermarket looking for someone who can give me the price and, and nobody appear very and good for, for this i think that is sometimes it's it's so disgusting disgusting can i say disgusting yeah you can say disgusting good. annoying no annoying no annoying is boring no annoying is good as well so you're not okay. happy about that one yeah okay yeah very good actually that is right i mean uh yeah in the supermarket you can compare you can do many things but if you have questions about the product as you say even if you find somebody there they don't know the difference right if you go and ask uh, why is this more expensive than this anybody's going to say um that's the price what can i say right or uh, why this have this particular ingredient uh, is this uh, more salty than this one or is this uh, the texture is different I mean oh yes you... yes teacher sorry the last year I have an experience I went to La Curaçao Metro Centro and La Curaçao El Paseo I asked for the same product it was a TV and in once in Metro Centro uh, the person that tell me explained me a lot about the TV and the and the other uh, branch branch can I say branch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other uh, the person who attend me doesn't know about the product. And in this case, was a girl. She was a representative for the for the brand, but she doesn't enough than the other person. And I was mm, for for my. For my lucky, I I know I know previously, and I only want to buy the the TV. But this person can explain me the difference, the the benefits, and I say, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is so true. I mean, um, yeah, that is a big disadvantage. Sometimes you and when you want to buy like a TV, I mean, a TV is not breath right that you are going to wait and you say i didn't like it i won't buy that anymore a tv is something that you want to keep for a long time and you want to be sure that it's going to work the way that you want uh, or the characteristics that you need i mean and uh, that happens in the self-service almost always maybe not always but almost always you you are not able to ask questions about products compare or uh, to get somebody who knows, who really knows about the product. And well, you then you don't know if you want to buy it or not. So that is an inconvenience, definitely. Very good, that is a very good example. Thank you, Rose. And then it says, um, it is mostly used in discount stores and by sellers of convenience goods and fast moving shopping goods. So like supermarkets, definitely. Okay, for full service, let's see. Nelson, could you please read Full service? Yes, teacher. Full service? Full, be, full service retailer offer full retailer re related. Uh, customer service in, in a store. They hire sales people to assist customer is every phase, every phase of the shopping process. Thank you very much. So yeah, this is like the opposite, right? Full service retailer offer full retail related customer services in a store. So it's like, what do you want? What size do you want? How much would you like to pay? Uh, what is the most important for you? Like when you want to purchase a cell phone, right? For some people, uh, the most important thing is the camera, right? For other people, it might be the size. For other people, it might be the price. For me, for example, it's very important that the the cell phone is fast. I want to install a lot of things and have a lot of things there, and I don't want the thing to be stuck. So, and uh, 
in these kind of stores, in these retailer stores, uh, even if they have different products, they, they have somebody that is going to be with you through the process of the purchase. Actually, that is what it says in the second one. They hire salespeople to assist customers in every phase of shopping process. So you can test it, you can check it, uh, you can do this, the other thing. Uh, I mean, it's, it's specialized, but sometimes you are not able to compare. You need to go to one store first, then you need to go to other store or third store if you really want to know the comparison between one and the other one. Okay, do you have any questions about full service? What are examples of full service stores here in El Salvador? Do you know? Simon? Simon, yes. The station. I'm sorry? In the gas station. <laughs> Yeah, people at the gas station, they are sometimes very, very nice. Brothers. Do you want me to check the oil level? Do you want me to clean the windshield? Do you want me to check the tires? So they are very nice. Not everybody's like that, but they are very nice. Any other? Example of full service store. Uh, Example of full service here in El Salvador for me is frown. Frown. Yeah, that is true. I mean, they have people that they know, right? That is a very good example because they have a lot of products there and they have people that they know, right? And if you get somebody that they don't know, they say, okay, wait, I'm going to send you somebody that can help you. Very good. Uh, actually, that is German, right? The pronunciation of that is Freund. People here always say Freund, but it's Freund. Okay, good. So the next one says limited service. Uh, let's see. Um, Guadalupe Lopez, could you please read limited service? I guess you're in mute. Can you update the, the screen, please? I am not able because this is full screen, but let me see if I can do this. Hold on a second. Oh, it's like this, okay. Hold on a second. Oh. Oh, here's it, okay. Okay, limited, a limited service. The store offers some of the service provided by the full service store. It is suitable for a store that sells shopping goods because customer may need information about product in store. Perfect, so limited services like a store that offers some of the services provided by the full service store, some of the services. I mean, you ask questions and they, they know the basics. They know general information about something. And then uh, maybe advanced questions, maybe they don't know. And it is suitable for stores that sell shopping goods because customers may need information about products in store. So this is like the regular store in El Salvador, right? You go and you ask questions and they know if they, uh, I mean, if you have in yellow, if you have in pink, if you have in different sizes, but sometimes they don't know more specific information. So that would be it. Any questions about this? Okay, so types of wholesalers. Now that we're speaking about types and how to classify that one. So we have different types of wholesalers as well. Let's see, Gloria Elizabeth Linares, could you please read Merchant Wholesalers? I guess you're in mute still. But this is me, excuse me. Don't worry. Merchant Wholesalers, 
take time to merchant, merchandise, full services and limited services, jobbers and distribu distribu distributor. Very good, perfect. So a merchant wholesaler is the one that take title to merchandise. Uh, full service and limited service jobbers and distributors. So it's in general um, stores or wholesalers that have sometimes full service or sometimes limited service. So it's like, sometimes it's like a mixture of both. So for some products that are basic, you don't have um, full service. For some products that are a little bit more complex, sometimes there is one people in that part of the store that will be able to provide you information. So this is like a merchant wholesaler, okay? Uh, merchandise, what is merchandise? In English, of course, please. The product. It's a product, very good, nice. So let's see, Sulma, could you please read full service wholesaler? Yes. Carry stock maintain a sales for offer credit made deliveries and provide management assistance. So this is full service, of course. So you are going to be able to have with the wholesalers carry stock. So you will know, for example, if something is not available, they know when it's going to be available. Okay. Or sometimes you can even um, do a reservation of products so you can uh, make like an order there in the in the store so they can get you to know hey the product is here you can come meaning a sales force so they always have people and uh, that know everything about the products that we have offer credit sometimes uh, is a very good idea for some customers that they want to purchase a lot of products make deliveries and provide management assistance. So this is very complete, as you can see, it's very, very nice. So you will be able to do a lot of things in this kind of wholesalers um, types. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, do you know any full service wholesaler here in El Salvador? that offers this kind of things, carry stock, mining, sales for, offer credit. Do you know a store like this? Curacao. Curacao. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, very good. That is very nice. Yeah, good. Cool. So the next one says limited service wholesalers. Pamela, could you please read this one? Sorry, what? Uh, could uh, you please read limited service wholesalers? Ah, uh, okay. Um, limited line of last moving goods, truck war sellers, drop shipper, truck chovers, mail order wholesalers. Very good. So limited is of course not. Uh, like the full service, okay? It has some features, but not all the features. Limited line of fast moving goods. So sometimes it's possible just to purchase um, a limited amount of goods or it's not possible to, they do not have a, a stock that is a very large stock. Truck wholesalers, like uh, they will be able to, to deliver, but only uh, large amounts of products drop shippers, so you will be able to pay for something and just come back, come to the store and, and, and get the product. Rack jobbers, that is like, uh, you will be able to, to put in order many products and you will be able to get all these products in one stock, in one box, in one rack or anything like that mail order wholesalers that, I mean, they will be able to mail you. It's not delivery, but they will be able to send you via mail some of the products. So it's good because it has some features that are good for you, but it's not like the full service that their own company there will provide all the services. Um, on the second one, there is a word that I didn't ask you. What is stock? Inventory. Very good. That is inventory. It's like part of logistics, right? 
Okay, we're going to check about brokers and agents. Let's see, Adriana Stefani, could you please read brokers and agents? Okay, Faci facility, facilitate buying and selling are two person and five and six person commission on selling price. Very good. This is a little bit different because they do not purchase anything. The only thing that they do is that they have, they have contacts. They call companies and they convince them to purchase products. And when they get to, uh, to get the sale, uh, they have an earning that might be from 2% to 6%. So depending on the arrangement that they have with the producers, uh, that is a very good thing. I mean, uh, it's very good because they don't have to purchase. They don't have to have a, a store or a warehouse with products. So they just call, get some contacts, do the arrangements uh, about the logistics, when is it going to be delivery, uh, what size, what pricing do you get? And they get a percentage of the sell. So that is a very good thing. And the last one says specialized wholesalers. Let's see. Uh, Susanna, could you please read specialized wholesalers? Agricultural assemblers, petroleum bulk plants and actions companies. Very good. So these are wholesalers, but specialized. One, two, three products. For example, the oil companies, I mean, they bring that from other countries and they get all the oil to all the petroleum to the gas stations, right? And the gas station is like the final retailer that sells the product to us. But um, these companies, what they do is just specialize. It's just one product, a service. They know what they do. They know how to transport everything, how to deliver, how to take care of the product so everything goes well. So these are like the type of wholesalers. Very good. Any questions before we move on? No. Good. And uh, this is distribution channel effectiveness. Ah, this is a very good. So it says, um, we need sometimes to evaluate the effectiveness of a distribution channel strategy. So yeah, sometimes we decided what will be the best distribution channel, maybe direct, maybe indirect, maybe hybrid with wholesalers, with agents, but you know, in companies, you always need to evaluate our methods. And sometimes we need to, to change, to adjust, to do something different. For example, for the pandemic, a lot of companies, they, they had to, to change things in the way that they were making businesses. First question for you is, what is effectiveness? That is it. Very good. In English, how would you explain that in English? When you get the objective, the goals. Very good. When you have a goal, an objective, and you achieve that objective. Sometimes we're not at 100% of achievement, but a very nice percentage. So that is it. And it says in this writing assignment, you will evaluate the effectiveness of distribution strategy, okay? Of course, we are not going to do the deliverables. So uh, let's see. Anna Michelle, could you please read step one? Okay, step one. Consider a time when you wanted to buy a certain product but couldn't find it. What was your reaction? Why? How did the lack of ability affect your perception of the company and of the product? Did, did it make you want it more or did it make you frustrated so that you lost interest? Speculate on the supply chain and distribution channel strategy 
that the company was trying to achieve. Very good, perfect, thank you. So the first uh, step to evaluate is this one. Consider a time when you wanted to buy a certain product but could not find it. I mean, you really need something and you go to the supermarket and there isn't any. And you go to other store and there isn't any. And you start thinking, why, why is this happening? Uh, what is going on with this company? So you don't know what is going on, but you believe that the company is making something that is not correct. Something is going on with the company, okay? Have you ever experienced anything like this? Okay, so... How did you feel? What was your reaction? Um, I was wondering what happened. Maybe, maybe the company doesn't doesn't produce anymore this product. I I was thinking many things, and I was very very sad <laughs> because I needed to make a. I I don't remember. I maybe a I a recipe and. An invent, I made it up and I recite and, and I need this product and I find it and I was very sad. Yeah, yes. that is something that happens, right? You believe, oh my goodness, something's going on. It doesn't exist anymore. Or maybe, I don't know, some, there, there are some changes. And uh, that is the word that it says that speculate on the supply chains and distribution channel. Um, so, that is the first thing that you need to do to uh, evaluate if what, what the customer is, is going to feel if your product is not there or if your product is not the quality or the price or something happens to the package, to the box. So the customer is going to think about something. Something is going on with this company. Some customers probably will say, I won't buy this anymore. Okay, I will go to other company because this is not good. Sure. Mm -hmm. When you go a restaurant and in, the, in that restaurant do, doesn't have uh, a specific meals, is very disgusting because uh, sometimes um, we, we prefer uh, a specific meals or, or a specific uh, food, for example, and the restaurant doesn't have is like a bad service or bad uh, experience because it uh, doesn't have the product, for example. That is true. I mean, sometimes you have expectations, right? That is like the customer has some expectation. And when you get to the place and you don't get the product or the price is different or something happened, you are disappointed. And the first thing uh, that you have is, I'm not going to come back here. I'm not going to continue purchasing this product. So yes, it has a, a, a huge impact. What happens in the moment that the customers come and try to get this product. Very good. Now, let's see. Um, Ophelia, could you please read step number two? Hello, Ophelia. Excuse me, no voy a encender el micrófono. Don't worry. Yes. And um, starting to, I know, consider I produce is willing, I body. I want to see you per perception post the products in company. I hope is you reception in friends. I be the weekend team of the pros speculating on the distribution starting and work for the company. 
Good, so the step number two is like the opposite. Now consider a product that is widely available. What is your perception of the product and the company? How is your perception influenced by the ubiquity of the product, speculate on the distribution strategy and goals of the company? So this is like the opposite. It's like when you look for a product and it's there everywhere, in every supermarket, in every store, in many colors, in many sizes. So what is your perception? How do you feel when that happens? Surprising. I want it all. <laughs> Very good. And how is your perception of the company, of that company that is offering you that? What do you think about that company? Teacher, uh, uh, for example, when when we go for the supermarket, uh, always uh, there are principal um, principal stand. Uh, when, uh, for example, when I see, see the the product in the principal stand, my fear perception is uh, see to there are any offer, for example, or less price, and because uh, always we we need or we or we want to observe uh, 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 yes. perceive mm -hmm. uh, perceive the, the the better price very good that is true so you feel nice right you feel satisfied you wanted the small one but there is a big one oh my goodness i will take the big one and there are different i mean different things so so the thing is here now, think about the distribution channel. For the step number one, when we didn't find anything, maybe it's not that the producers, maybe the, uh, the company that produced that uh, good is fine, but maybe the distribution channel is the one that is not working properly. And in the second example, maybe is the distribution channel and also the, the producers, the ones who have a very nice partnership, right? Because one produces and the other one delivers on time. And there is always product for you to purchase anytime that you want. So that is that is something that has a big impact uh, at the end. Go ahead. Once a principal distribution channel are the supermarket because uh, the supermarket distributes many brands and products, but uh, and how to personal that are put all products and in a in, in a order to to uh, to to are attractive to to the customer. That is true. So uh, yes, I mean when. When you compare the two situations, you realize how important, how important is the channel of distribution. Also the production, I mean, everything is important. But because of, for example, a, a bad partnership with another company, you might lose a lot of customers. So that is not good. Okay, step number three. Uh, we're going to finish this and then we're going to check the attendance, okay? Step number three, Jan Silisbeth, please. Hello, Jancy. Not here, she's bringing some coffee. Ricardo. Okay, it's a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's step number three. That is the one that you... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, script three, uh, compare and constant you're finding in the field to a strip of dealing the value of the product influence your soul. 
and attitude toward the product and the company. Specular as to whether the company distribution strategy have proven effective and service the will. Very good. So at the okay. end, this is, thank you. Uh, at the end, this is what we need to do. Compare and contrast your findings in the first two steps. So um, how did the availability of the products influence your thoughts and attitude towards the products and the company? I mean, when you see a lot of products and you you feel that you're happy, right? Just feel that that company is a very good company, that they care about you, that they have good quality. Uh, when you don't find the products, I mean, you believe that maybe the whole company is not good. Speculate as to whether the company's distribution strategies have proved effective and serve them well. So yeah, that's why we did to compare, right? What's going on in the bad situation? What's going on in the good situation? I have a, a couple of words. In step number two, there is a word that I want to ask you about, ubiquity. You know what is ubiquity? No. Okay, ubiquity is something that is everywhere. You can find it anywhere. So that is ubiquity, okay? So that's why it says here, the perception influenced by the ubiquity of the product. So you go to one store and you see the brand. You go to other store, you see the brand. Anywhere is going to be that one, okay? Uh, the other one that I want to ask you is availability. What is availability in the step number three? Available, similar? Yeah, it comes from the same word actually, available. There are products, okay? So when you can find, when there are things that you're looking to get. The other word that I want to ask you is toward. It says thoughts and attitude toward the product. What is toward? Anybody? On oh, the tower, for example, when you when you say uh, an address, oh my God, is is in direction. I think when you say an address, you use the, the, the word tower. Very good, perfect. Yeah. Nice. So tower is a preposition. Oh, yeah. It's a preposition, but it, uh, in English there are many kinds of prepositions, and there are prepositions that yeah. are on movement. Mm -hmm. So, for example, yeah. into, onto. Uh, how to, all those are prepositions that we use when mm -hmm. we are in movement. So in this case, it's attitude towards that goes to the products in the company. Very good. And the last question on this one is weather. It says speculate as to whether the company's distribution. So what is weather? Anybody? Hello. Weather is not synonym the if. Very good. So weather is a synonym of if. If the company's distribution strategies have proved effective and served them very well. Good, good, very nice. So let's go to step number four. Uh, Maida. Okay, please go ahead, Jancy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Okay, stay. Step four, write, write your paper. In addition the, to discussing, discussing each of the question in step one and two, be sure to include the comparison between the two companies of, and products. Okay, so this is an, a direction for the paper, but you are not going to write the paper, okay? And then it says save and submit your assignment. So this is for the homework that I did a long time ago. We're not going to do that one. So very good, perfect. We're going to do a pause and we're going to 
check the attendance, okay? Let me just check here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Salmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Eh, Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Very good. So now we are going to continue with the class. Okay, so we are going to check a little bit of grammar today. I know that you know this, but anyways, we're going to, to check it. So this is comparatives using us and us. Do you remember that one? Have you checked that before? Yes, teacher. Very good. So this is just a review, okay? So uh, there are two ways that we can use this. For example, the first part says subject plus the verb plus us plus an adjective plus us and then a noun or noun phrase. For example, Benji is as playful as Cody. So Benji is the subject, is, is the verb and the comparative is as playful as Cody. Okay, so in this case, who is more playful, Benji or Cody? Benji. Benji. Okay. What, what is the opinion of the rest of the class? Benji is winning. I think that I'm comparing Benji is us, Cody us. <laughs> Very good. So in this case, they and are the both, same. Uh -huh, both are the same. Very good. Yeah. But what happens if I say Benji isn't as playful as Cody? Cody is the playful. Exactly. So if the sentence is negative, the second noun or noun phrase yeah. is more than the first one. Yeah. Very good, perfect. So also we can use this comparative with adverbs. So for, for example, Benji runs as fast as Cody. So if the sentence is affirmative, remember that they are the same. If the sentence is negative, 
The second one is more than the first one, depending on what you are saying. Any questions about this? Okay, the other one is when we use a noun. So the rule is going to be the same, subject plus verb, as, and then much or many, or a noun, and then as. So for example, Ayami has as many cars as Zora. So in this case, it's about possessions, right? It's about property. And uh, we're not going to use an adverb or an adjective, but we're going to use a noun, okay? And there is another one. Hayami has as many as Zora. So that will be it. Any questions about this? No questions. Okay, very good. Okay, let's make a little practice with the comparatives. You can uh, use affirmatives or negatives, but you are going to provide me an opinion. For stores, let's do it with stores in El Salvador. For example, um, what is better in your opinion, of course, um, Tigo or Claro? Claro. Uh -huh. Now, but use the comparative. So how is it going to be with us and us? For me, Tigo is better. Yeah, but we're not going to, to use that one. We're going to say, for example, um, Claro isn't as good as Tigo. So that is the structure that we're going to use. For example, for this one, if you believe that Tigo is better, you say Claro is not as good as Tigo. That will be the form. So, uh -huh, the rest of the people, what is your opinion? Remember that it's just an opinion, right? It's just to practice English. For me, uh, communication is better because Claro has the most, uh, the most, uh, Technology and the network communication because Claro has installation 5G. Imagine. So I'm going to change my internet, definitely. You see the problems that I'm having here, right, with the class? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I have another question. What about Happy? Have you tried Happy? Is this? I, I heard comment that happy is that is internet service. Is good? Yes. Uh, 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 I heard that good comment. So is that good? Is that good as Claro? Do you believe? No, because happy is a small company, and Claro have the big. Uh, Telecommunication network. Okay, we have the opinion of an expert, so now you know. <laughs> Very good. We learn a lot of here. I think. Uh, this information is because I work at Ericsson. Ericsson is for in installation and uh, uh, or equipment for technology communication technology. very good very good okay so we have the the opinion of an expert regarding uh, everything that is networking and things like that let's talk about your opinion as consumers of uh, the one that you use the connection what do you believe in it your depends, it depends on the sound because all communication companies how good service, but in different zones. Maybe, maybe that is true. So for example, some people, for some customers might be very important how the um, 
when you go to the stores, how they attend you, right? How they talk to you uh, if you don't wait a lot of time. For some people, that is very important, even more than the connection of the internet, right? Uh, they say, no, I don't like that company because I, 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 am, I have to be there one hour and they never help me. So, but I mean, the real service is the is that one, right? Is the internet connection and is the, the phone service. That is the real service. But customers, they have different opinions depending on what is the most important thing for, for them. Yes, right. it's it, it true that all companies have a problem, have a problem, have a demand of uh -huh. customer because in some towns they don't have a super service. And, but in, I think that it's very very important to take in how that is a question about the antenna. Uh, that is, yeah, I guess it's an antenna. Yeah. And then, for example, in my case, in my home, where I, I live, I have a antenna in front of my house uh, in the service is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very funny because uh, I have some merit for the service is bad for them. Yeah, that happens, you know. What I do, for example, that for the class, I connect myself via uh, the cable, you know, net cable. Uh, it's better for me because in that way I, I avoid problems. Anyways, I had some problems Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so I don't know what happened. I changed a lot of things today, and I guess now we made it. But sometimes that happens. I mean, that is one of the things that happens with this kind of services, with this kind of company. Sometimes customers, they want all the answers, right? They go to the store and they need this and this and this and they ask questions. But sometimes you can read online. Sometimes you can go and research and there are answers there. So, but many customers, we are not like that. We like to go and that somebody comes to our house and fix the problem. And sometimes you just need to change some things, right? For example, Yesterday, my husband uh, was a funny moment because he was uh, claimed to Tigo because uh, he paid for 40 megas of internet and always he has bad service. But the customer service of Tigo said that, the, that he has the 40 megas of internet, but uh, always he has a, a cell phone, a cell phone uh, with, with technology 5G. Obviously, if he don't have a, a, this kind of cell phone, never has a phone in the But this point never say That is true. I mean, uh, as I was telling you, sometimes you can fix some things yourself, right? You can go and research and look for the answers. Why is this happening? That, uh, for example, I was wondering myself on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, why? Why the internet connection is not working properly? Why is, is this going on today? I, I guess I fixed it already, and I guess 
from now on, we're going to have very good classes with no disconnection. But you need to do yourself as well some, some things, right? Uh, and that is the problem. The problem is that some people, uh, they need answers as soon as possible. Okay, very good. So we're going to continue with the book. Very nice. We learned some things. <laughs> okay, so here we have the book. So um, it says, a look at the distribution channel decision matrix below. And then it says, you are a group of farmers. So which, the thing here is, what is the best? What is the best option? What is the possible channel? Will customers buy? So that is the next question. Fits product and brand. Fits organization, profit potential. So we're going to try to avoid, uh, try to provide any information about these examples. So the first one, it says, you are a group of farmers with high-end products who want to expand out of the local market. So what distribution channel would you get to this? If you are a group of farmers with a lot of products and you want to expand out of the local market. So you right now, you are just selling in the local market, but you want to be international. So what is the possible channel that you would like to, that you will get into this one? We have to be aggressive, think big and use the wholesale channel. <laughs> I Very think. Good. Yeah, wholesale yeah. sounds good, right? Sounds like you can go for it. And so what will be the, um, if you, let's say that we decide for the wholesale, um, what would be the first step in this case? So we decided wholesale, let's try that one. We're going to invest a lot of money. We're going to produce a lot of products. And now what we do? So what will be the, the first step on that one? If we get wholesale distribution channel. Is your opinion, of course, we can be wrong. Don't worry. Let's practice English. For me, we have to choose the best uh... Um, companies, trusted yeah. companies for making the, the deal. Very good. Yeah. So the first step is that one, right? We want to sell this in, I don't know, in the US, for example, from El Salvador to the US. So now we contact, let's say 10 companies. So what different characteristics do we need from those companies so we can choose maybe two or three or one, I don't know. What characteristics do we need to look for in these companies so we can choose? Mm -hmm. Hello. I am here waiting for you. Repeat the question, teacher. The experience, the experience of the company, the, the name, the solid or oh, capacity. <laughs> capacity? Yeah. yeah, the capacity, yeah. Yeah, the capacity that the company is how. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know many things. And the way that they... Uh, they uh, ma manage, ma handle, they handle the, the, oh my God, the channels. I don't know. Very good. Yeah, there are many things. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah Lourdes, the question was, uh, what characteristics would you look for you to choose the right company that it will be your wholesaler? 
So, yeah, I mean, all that is important. Uh, the, uh, the experience they have, I mean, uh, that is very important. Maybe another company is going to provide a percentage that is less uh, and we're going to have more profit, but they don't have experience. Mm, so that sometimes is not good. Cheap sometimes is expensive. So yeah, the way that they handle all the products, I mean, they have to show, right? Oh, we do this, we go to the airport or to the, um, to the ship to bring all the things. We do this, we do this with careful things and you are going to have the package in this good condition, everything. Also, yeah. another thing that I believe is important is the, what people think about that company, right? Yeah, we have to remember that at the end, uh, the name that the people remember, it, or, uh -huh, uh, it's the name of, of our company. For example, uh, lacasita.com is my company and the, the people remember my company, not the wholesale. The wholesaler is the, is the how do you say, the intermediate? Intermediate, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very and good. That's the way that I have to think uh, the strategic alliance that I'm going to, to make. Definitely. I mean, that is so true. Remember the, uh, the comparison that we made? I mean, when, when we were saying uh, we didn't find the product, something is going on. Is, I don't find the products anywhere. But we, we think about the company. We don't say the supermarket here is bad. I don't know what's going on. No, we say that company that sells the product is not good. So yeah, that is, that is so true. Good, perfect. So what we will do if we want customers to buy our products in this wholesaler? So we have an arrangement with one wholesaler or two or three, I don't know. But now we want our customers to buy our products from that wholesaler, what we should do. Hello. Okay. I'm going to ask a person then because there are no volunteers. Lourdes, what do you think? Repeat the question, teacher, please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know that this time is a little bit tired though. Anyways, so the question is what we should do if we want our customers to come to this wholesaler company and purchase our products. ¿Qué debería hacer yo como consumidor, por ejemplo, in Spanish? I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish today. Oh, <laughs> I will repeat the question, okay? What we should okay. do if mm -hmm. we want that uh, the customers come to a, not to our company, come to the wholesaler that is the partner that we have and buy our products, what we should do? Um, the customer, uh, for example, ask the wholesaler about uh, the product or uh, compare the product or the promotion or what offer a wholesaler uh, about the product after. Uh, no, 
before uh, take a decision to purchase the product. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, so they will be able to see that our products and bargains and offers and pricing there. But, but what happens if they don't know? They don't know that our products are there. And our products is very, uh, is very famous. So what should we do in this situation? Any body? You to need to create a marketing strategy and you promoting in your fan page or other channel if your products are in this wholesaler. Very good, perfect. Yeah, definitely, that will be it. Uh, somebody else was also speaking. In, in, other, in other case, teacher, it's possible that the restriction of policies related to the exclusive, the, the only for a buy between a wall seller, he is not permit a, the commercial between a retailers. Or very good. Uh -huh. the price is very different um, between the when the customer buy a, a, a few volume volume. Okay. Yeah. And the price is, is different for the category of the customer. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect. Thank you very much. And Carla, I guess you were going to say something. Yes, I think it depends the brand, the price, the place, uh, because all products uh, are do for a category customer. Uh, but it uh, depends of the offer. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, there are many things that we should do. But of course, if we have an arrangement already and this company, this wholesale retailer is, is also big and they have experience and our product is also nice, definitely the best next option will be to create a marketing strategy, right? Advertise. Say, okay, now we are with this company and your products or our products are going to be there for you to get it. Come and purchase, right? Even in the newspaper, sometimes you, you can see that they are partners with other company that now in El Salvador, this company is going to come and is going to provide these products for all people to come and you get interested. Oh, I need to go and see that thing. So that is the next step. Of course, remember that this is a distribution channel, but of course we can link this with other topics that we have checked in the past. We are not going to check the next one. That is not with us. Okay, so here we have another conversation. So this is, uh, let me just go back. Compare distribution options to feed a product's target market. And uh, it says, let's start. What is the most important value companies should get for distribution services? Oh, this question is very good. What is your opinion? What is the most important value a company should get for distribution services? What do you think?
Mm, ordered. I'm sorry? Attention the client. Order. Order, uh, yeah, so be careful with the clients. Okay, very good. Attention for the people, for your clients. Yeah, the way that they treat the customers. Very good. The person and Cali. I'm sorry? At the pricing. The pricing, you say? Price, yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. Yeah, pricing, I mean, sometimes that is a very important thing, but uh, it should be mm -hmm. an arrangement, of course, when you distribute some services. Also, in attention to attention. Very good. Okay, yeah, definitely that is very important. Uh, look at the next question. It says, can personalized packaging and product testing be considered an extra value? What is, for first of all, what is personalized packaging? What do you understand about this? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, sometimes, uh, Lourdes, go ahead. Yes, for me, it's considered an extra value because uh, some companies offer a personalized vacation in the birthday of the customer, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, it's an extra value. Yeah, I mean, that sometimes is a little detail, right? But when you receive your package with your name or something that is just for you, uh, you feel better, right? You say, ah, oh, okay, this is something that I would like to to repeat. It's so good too when a, when a business offers products that are customized for them. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, actually, that is the next one, right? Product testing. So, uh, for example, in the supermarket, sometimes some people, they, they have some, some testing things there for you to taste, I don't know, cream or dips or anything. And sometimes... Uh -huh. So, and sometimes... With that one, you will be able just to purchase. You say, ah, oh, this is good. Maybe I can purchase this one. So that is something that might be valuable. And that is something that is done by the company that is the wholesaler. Of course, it's together with the producers. But the, uh, is the, the final retailer, the one that goes to the, to the consumer, the one who does that. So we're going to check the conversation that we have here. It says Ed and Philip are discussing the sales of their ice cream. Take turns practicing the conversation with a partner. We're going to check some pronunciation. I'm going to say, and you are going to repeat. Here we go. We have to reevaluate that our distribution options. Consumers are not as interested in purchasing our products from retail stores as before. Uh huh. We have to reevaluate. Evaluate. We have, have to reevaluate our distribution options. Our consumers are not interested in purchasing our products for retail stores. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to a wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacity. 
the online store is the online store, online store, store is becoming very, very, very popular. Probably, 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 probably we need to we need to a wholesaler who can provide, provide us with extra storage capacity. We can provide us with extra storage capacity. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allows us to get our products in strategic places on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it would be. I agree. I, I agree. agree. Let's, let's look let's for, a for a distribution option that allows, that allows, that allows us that to get our product, product in a strategic place, place on, on time. time. The current retail story is not as a strategy as I, I thought I could be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesalers. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesalers. Very good, very easy, right? So now, uh, let me see if there is any word that we will need to check. Wholesaler, extra capacities. I agree. I don't think so. I believe everything is fine. Okay, so we're going to practice the conversation. Let's see. Uh, Rosa Elena and Anna Selmy. Okay. Who is Juan? Who okay. is Saul? Okay, I'm Juan. Okay. Okay. We have to reevaluate our distribution options. Consumers are not as interested in purchasing our products from retail stores as before. The online store is becoming be very popular. Probably we need to switch to a wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacities. capacities. I agree. Let's look for a distribution options that allow us to get our product in strategic places on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it will be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesalers. Very good. Now, Osmin and Guadalupe. Right. Okay. I, I, I am young. Okay. We okay. have to evaluate our distribution option. Consumers are not as interested in purchasing our product from the retail store as before. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to a wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacity. I agree. Let's look for a distribution auction that allow us to get our products in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as a strategy as I took at Wall I will call a consult to ask about some possible Wholesaler. Very good, perfect. Now, Lourdes and Ada Patricia. Okay, I am Juan. Okay. Okay. We have to reevaluate our distribution options. Consumers are not as interest, interested in purchasing our products from retail store as before. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to a seller who can provide use with extra storage capacities. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allows us to get our product in strategic places on time. The current retail store is not as straight as strategic strategic as I thought it will be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible sellers. Very good, perfect. Now Nelson and Carla Vasquez. I start Carla. We have we have to revalue our distribution option. Consumer 
are not interested in purchasing our product from retail store as before. You hear? We can hear you, Carla. Sorry. No worries. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to wholesaler who can provide use with extra store capacity. I agree. Let's look for a situation option. That's a that allows to get a production in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it will be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesaler. Very good, perfect. Now, Ophelia, and uh, let me check. And Mayra. Okay, uh, I start. Okay. We have to reevaluate our distribution options. Consumers are not as interested in purchasing our products from retail store as before. I guess for night styles is be becoming a very popular. I probably I will need a two cheese to a cholester, I host can probably with, with a certain story health capacity. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allow us to get our products in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it would be. I will, I can consider, I too has a vast summary possible, I hold listening. Okay, thank you. Now, Anna Michelle and uh, Rafael. Okay. Anna, start. Okay. Okay. We have to reevaluate our distribution option. Consumers are not at interested in purchasing our product from retail stores as before. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to a wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacities. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allows us to get out to get our products in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as, as strategic as I thought it would be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesaler. Very good, thank you. Now, Adriana and um, Gloria Elizabeth Linares. Okay, we start. We have to reevaluate our distribution options. Consumer are not at instant inter interested in purchasing of products for retail store as before. Uh, the online store is becoming uh, very popular. Probably was need to switch to a wireless wholesaler. Wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacities. I agree. Let's, let's look for a distribution option that allows us to get our product in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it would be. I will, ca I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wool sellers. Good, very good. Now, uh, Jansi and Zulma. <clears throat> okay. We have to reevaluate our distribution option. Customer 
are not as interested in purchasing our product from retail store as before. The online store is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch to a wholesaler who can provide us with extra storage capacity. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allow us to get our product in a strategic place on time. The currently retail store is not as strategic as I strove it will be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possible wholesaler. Good. So now Ricardo and Susana. Okay. Okay, Ricardo. Uh, Okay. We have to revaluate our distribution options. Consumers are not as interested in purchasing our products from retail stores as before. Uh, the online store uh, is becoming very popular. Probably we need to switch uh, to a forester uh, who can probably switch extra store property. I agree. Let's look for a distribution option that allow us to get our products in a strategic place on time. The current retail store is not as strategic as I thought it would be. I will call a consultant to ask about some possibility was less side level. Okay, very good, perfect. So we don't have time for more, but... Um... We will be finishing by checking the attendance. Uh, before we finish, do you have any questions for the class of today? Clear as our chat. Okay, very good. So today, at last, we have a very nice class with no interruptions and anything. So I guess from now on, everything is going to be fine. I'm very happy about that one. So I'm going to check the attendance and remember that we will meet tomorrow. So let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. I thank you. I'm sorry. Gloria, right? Okay, um, Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Okay, with you, Michelle, we are going to have the one on one today. Okay. Uh, Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Okay, perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you. See you tomorrow. Rest very well and dream in English. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Good night. night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, hello, Ana Michelle. How are you?
No, fine. Thank you. Nice. Very well. So I believe that you have experience in the one on ones already. So you know what is this about? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So the first question is, um, how do you feel we are going on? I mean, we, you feel that now we are moving on in, in a nice place. I mean, do you believe that you are learning? In the, here yes. In... Yes, of course. But um, I need to uh, ampliar my English. Okay. You need more vocabulary or what is that you need? I need more vocabulary. Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> and um, I need uh, I need uh, improve. I need uh, to improve. I need to know. Uh, yes, yes. How oh. how improve more quickly? Okay, very good. Actually, I was checking. Then your English is very good. Um, also, your pronunciation is very nice, and your accent is also nice. So. Yeah, probably the only thing that you need to do is to practice a little bit more and you will be on the right path. So the question is, um, do you practice only in the English classes? Mm, sometimes I I'm start to think in English, but <laughs> I don't know if it if, is if, if helpful <laughs> for me. And uh, I listen to music in English, so that's that. That's it. Okay, very good. Actually, those are very good activities. So you can continue practicing. You are going to get vocabulary. You are going to listen the pronunciation of some words. So definitely, that is going to be something that is going to help you a lot. So you need to continue and also try to speak i know that in the in the classes sometimes since we're speaking about certain topics um sometimes we don't know what to say or maybe we know but we say i don't know if it's correct but um yes my invitation for you is to to, to do it right so even if it's not correct the problem uh, the, the thing here is to practice english right so i know that is english for work uh, but you can provide your opinion. You can say whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Yes, because in all these these um, topics, I feel a little shy because I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say, what what to say. So I feel a little shy. Yeah, but you can always provide with your opinion. The practice of the English is the more important. Okay, so you can say, for example, when I speak about a word or a phrase, you can say, oh, this is this. So practice is very important. And um, well, let me ask you, do you have a, a question to any of the things that we have checked or things that you checked in the other modules? In this time, I have a little, a little doubt about this last topic because for me, when I read, I read the sentence, uh, I feel that, siento como que, como que no le encuentro la lógica, pero, pero no sé. Uh, is that in the comparative, when we use as and as? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. As and as. Okay, that is very easy. I will explain you, okay? So, the thing here is, that you can compare with better or bigger that is that is fine but sometimes it's necessary to compare in the same level that's when we are going to use as and as so when we use um that one for example if we say uh if we say carlos has as many books as i don't know freddy so when we say that what we're saying is that both have the same amount of books, right? Mm -hmm. In Spanish, it's like when we say, Carlos tiene tantos libros como, mm -hmm. right? So it's something like that. Maybe the difference is when it's negative. So Carlos doesn't have as many books as Freddy. So whenever you okay. see a negative, Remember that the second noun, the second person, the second object is the one that has more 
than the first one. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, I, I, I thought the same when, when we see the, the, the example in negative. Mm -hmm. No, okay. So that is and, it, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay, and uh, in the first sentence, que era, is as, ahí fue donde yo sentí como que no concuerda, ¿verdad? yo pensando. Pero entonces ahí fue donde yo me, me, me trae un poquito. Yeah, that was like with an adjective, right? Something like, um, I don't know, we can say Santana is as clean as San Salvador, something like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I listen a little, a little rare, rare, mm -hmm. rare? Al, algo raro, la escucha raro, la relación entre is, is as, el verbo y el as. Mm -hmm. no, but it's, it's, it's very normal to be honest with you. I mean, it's something that actually in English is used very, very uh, common. It's very common in English. So it's going to be something that you are going to find. If you understand the grammar and the position and everything, the rest is uh, just a matter for you to to practice it and that's it okay i will i will practice uh, this topic very good yes. perfect do you have any okay. other questions no no uh, only the, okay. that question very good so remember that if you have questions you can uh, chat with me directly or you can chat in the group and then of course it will be a pleasure to help you out okay Thank you so much, teacher. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye.